What's up guys, it's Blipthis here. Today I'm going to be doing a review on the AI tracking gimbal Cinepeer CQ5 by Ziyun. This video is sponsored by Ziyun. They sent me this product for review. However, they did not have any input into my video prior to me uploading it onto YouTube. So this review is purely my thoughts, my opinions, my experience using this product here. And I gotta say, right off the bat, it's a pretty good product. This product is great, especially for someone who's first getting into the smartphone gimbal area. This is something you probably wanna look into. Let's look at the product right off the bat. We have magnetic AI tracking camera right here that just snaps on like so. You can hear that it snaps on pretty well. Uh, and at the bottom here is a light module that you can control using the scroll wheel here. And that just also snaps on just like so. Now, using this so far for the past little while, I've gotta say the motors are pretty good. This is a running test without the gimbal. This is a running test with the gimbal. If it has a good hand feel, this rubberized portion here makes it very comfortable. This thing can also extend outwards all right, making it a, a good selfie stick, all right, especially when you're walking around and you need that extra length. It can also tilt up for those shots where you're, you're doing a selfie shot, okay? And you just collapse it back down. And at the bottom here, it has a screw hole where you can screw on the tripod just like so. All right. And that actually extends out pretty wide, so it gives you a nice stable base when you're planning on walking away and using the AI tracking feature. On the side here, it has a scroll wheel which you can depress down. That will turn on the light. All right, I'll show you right now. You press it down and that switches on the light. You can see there. And just to turn it off, you hold it back down, okay? Now this scroll wheel also controls the zoom function while you're using the app that's included with this, uh, this thing. Then on here, you got the joystick, you got the mode button, you got the record button, and then off the side, on the right side, you got the input, and then you also got the power button, okay? And that's pretty much it. So compared to a lot of other uh, gimbals out on the market, this one, is pretty basic functions around the, the handle, but it's quite intuitive and it's good. I, I, I like it that it's simple that way because especially for someone who, you know, if you haven't used a gimbal in a long time and you pick one up, there's sort of like this little learning curve that you have to go through. And having something that's simplified this way, which is really great for that. You just pick it up and you know what to do right away. Especially with the indicating lights in the front here, you know what mode to switch it on and there's no, there's no guessing with it. it. It does what exactly what a gimbal would do. The trigger button in the back here, double press to reset the position, all right? Triple press to change it from landscape to portrait. And you can see right there, okay? And I normally like to use it on POV mode because POV mode allows me to move the gimbal position left and right, up and down, and it follows pretty quickly. Now, on this gimbal, it has about four or five modes but the basic four modes are indicated on the lights here. So the first one here is pan follow, okay? Pan follow will pan, it will pan and follow your pan, but it won't allow you to tilt. You can see there, you see how the phone just stays in one position when I tilt, but it follows when I turn left and right. The second is the locked position. The locked position will keep the phone in the position that you have it locked at. So. You can see how the phone, even though I'm moving left and right, up and down, it stays in that one spot. Okay, you see that? You see this? There. This mode is great for especially when you're walking with somebody and they're like walking maybe beside you and you just want to make sure that the, the camera is shooting them all the time no matter where your body is turning. And that's where locked 
mode comes into play. All right. Full follow. Full follow is this F position. Full follow will pan left and right with you, but also tilt with you as well. Now, what's the difference between full follow and POV? In my opinion, POV, the motors are much quicker. You can see how I'm going left and right, and there's like this slight delay every time I move left and right. It kind of makes the movement very smooth. You can see that, all right? That's when you want to use the follow button, the follow mode, I mean. But POV, you can see here, it just starts straightening up right away, but it moves quicker with you. It moves left and right way faster. It just reacts faster. Now, if you're a person that has a big phone like I do, this is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. This is the biggest version that Apple makes. It actually fits it. You can see here, it has a nice clamping system in the back, right? It just, it's both of these just separate out and they clamp onto the bottom and the top. And it's great that it has like this lip at the top and the bottom to hold the phone in securely. So it's pretty great. The rubberized system here is exactly the same rubber that they use with the handle. It's soft, so we'll keep your phone scratch free. In this video, I don't really want to go through the entire walkthrough of how to use this thing. I really just want to give you my opinions on this product, okay? What I think of it using it and compare to other products. Now, pros and cons, that's what I normally do on my reviews, and so let's start off with the pros, okay? Pros, it's really easy to use. This thing is super easy to use and handle. It has great motors, it has great balancing. It's easy to just maneuver around, and. It's very clear on the indication in the front, especially here, you know, with the lights, what mode you're in and what when you need to use it. It's very intuitive. The second pro I think about this product here is the AI tracking feature, okay? Now, the AI tracking feature is pretty great because especially if you're shooting by yourself, let's say for instance, you're a person that's traveling and you're constantly, you know, you're doing the selfie mode thing, you're traveling around the city and you're walking and you're talking. Where the AI tracking camera feature actually comes into play here is this part here. I've set this camera so then it's facing towards me with the clamp. You can see the rear camera here. The AI tracking feature camera comes into very handy for this. Now, if you know on iPhones, the front camera is always the worst camera. It's like this 12 megapixel, very blurry, especially at nighttime, and it's not that great. Now, a lot of people like to shoot themselves with the rear cameras on the iPhones, and this is where the AI camera comes into play. Like, this is where it, it shines, because once you attach the module onto the top here, all right, you can see that the light is just coming up, and once it's initiated, what you can do is just do the OK symbol like this, and you can see that the AI tracking camera turns green, all right? And once it turns green, it will follow me. It will follow my face, okay? So all you need to do is just hit the record button and, all right, you get the record button and you can start recording yourself. All right, the third pro about this product is that it comes with the little light box, okay? This little light module here that you can just snap onto the bottom here, all right? just like that. And you can control this light bulb just by pressing this button on the side here, the scroll wheel button. Press it on there. And in order to change the brightness level, you just click it again. Two, four, five. So there's five brightness levels on this thing. The first one being that, second, third, fourth, fifth, see? And then to just turn it off, you just hold it back down and it shuts off. The real game-changing feature that this product features is a voice-activated control. Now, if you have this gimbal placed somewhere far and you want to activate some of its features, now you can. Included inside the instruction manuals are the commands that you can talk to this gimbal to activate some of its controls. Now, you've got the activation command, which is, hey, Cami and you can hear that beep go on. When you hear that beep, that means it's listening to you. And what you can do is, hey, Cami, flash, and the flash will turn on. 
All right? Hey, Cammy. Hey, Cammy. Brighter. And it goes brighter. Hey, Cammy. Take a photo. Take a photo. And it's recording a video. And that's where I'm going to go with the cons. This is where it becomes a little bit weird. No product is perfect and every product eventually will become to its perfect form after many improvements, right? Let's take a look at what I think needs improvement. The AI voice feature is a hit and miss sometimes, okay? It works most of the time, but sometimes it has problems recognizing what I'm trying to say. Hey Cammy, flash off and it turns off. In this instance, because I'm close to the AI microphone here, it works pretty great. Hey Cammy, landscape mode. Landscape mode, that was not landscape mode. Oh, that's landscape mode. You see, it's kind of like, it gives you the indication that you don't know what it's, what it's doing. Hey Cammy, portrait mode. And you can see that it actually works when you want it to work. But here are the cons. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it does that, okay? The reason why it does that is because this camera module here, this magnetic camera module, it gets into the way when it wants to go into portrait mode, all right? It's just because it's just too big. It's too big and it doesn't have the clearance to this rod here, okay? I set it in PF mode, pan follow mode, okay? and. I'll snap the modules in. All right, what will happen if you have it on some of the modes is that when you do a quick like that, you knock the module off, okay? Especially when you're not thinking about it, you're running and you're doing stuff, you just kind of just knock the module off. And I feel that if they were gonna rebuild this next generation of this gimbal, they should have a module that's smaller. And second, magnetic is great but also maybe have a clip on the side. That's something to kind of like think about. And however, the light module doesn't fall off because it's great. Like, I mean, it's, it has enough clearance. You see that? It just quickly falls off. It has enough clearance. And that's kind of like one of the, the gotchas of this product is like, mm, okay, be very careful. I, I personally now, I have a rule, if I'm going to be using this product, I don't put the modules in unless I know I'm gonna be using it at the moment. If I'm just gonna use it for normal gimbal action, I'll have the modules off and just have it in my pocket. So the third thing that I think that needs improvement with this product is being able to switch the orientation at startup. Some gimbals will allow you to change the orientation at startup from portrait to landscape, preferably if you're always you know, shooting in portrait for social media or if you're shooting in landscape for YouTube. I personally like it in landscape, but this thing always starts up in portrait mode. So it starts up like that and it kind of, mm, kind of gives me problems because I always have to triple tap you know, and get into it when I first started up. It doesn't remember. And I've tried to search the app in the settings. I could not find it. So maybe I'm wrong, but right now there is no, there is no way for me to be able to change that setting. Okay, this camera light module, great. If I stick it on here and I turn it on, right? It has, it's pretty bright, but the problem is it only has one tone. What if you want a much more warmer tone or a brighter tone? This one here I would say is probably about neutral tone and just the ability to dim it in five stages is just okay, but it'd be even better if it could change the warmth of it. And that would be great. All right, so overall, what is my take on this gimbal? I think it's pretty good for somebody who's looking to buy their first gimbal and they want some cool AI tracking features. This has got to be a good solid contender for a lot of the options out there. And I got to say, yeah, it's pretty fun to use, pretty easy, intuitive, feels good. The build is pretty good and I like it. I like it. I'd buy it myself for sure. I hope you enjoyed my review. Link down below for this product here. All right, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next review. Take care. Peace out.